China's decision to quietly field the ASN-301 anti-radar loitering munition in its Eastern Theater Command marks a subtle but consequential shift in the balance of electronic warfare across the Western Pacific. Until recently, this air vehicle was mostly a model on trade show floors and a subject of speculation in defense journals. Now it appears in official footage launching from truck canisters during live-fire drills, a clear indicator that the platform has migrated from prototype to line unit. The symbolism matters as much as the capability, Beijing is signaling that it can hunt down the very radar emitters that underpin American and Allied early warning, missile guidance, and air defense coherence, and it can do so persistently, at scale, and from mobile launchers that are hard to find. What separates this class of loitering munition from traditional anti-radiation missiles is time and pressure. A missile is a sprint, fast, lethal, expensive, and fleeting. The ASN-301 is a siege. Once fired, it can loiter for hours, listening for the telltale electronic heartbeat of an active radar. Operators on the defending side face a dilemma with no comfortable option. Power down and the air picture goes dark, inviting surprise from cruise missiles or strike aircraft. Keep sensors on and the emitter becomes a beacon that draws the drone in for a terminal strike. That persistent threat weaponizes uncertainty and compresses decision timelines for commanders who rely on radar to stitch together a defensive tapestry over sea and land. Equally important is how the system is deployed. The launcher array, Integrated on a tactical 6x6 truck chassis already common in PLA logistics, packs multiple sealed canisters that can be ripple-fired within seconds. Mobility is doctrine here, not just convenience. A canister cold launch, engine spin-up, and immediate displacement by the vehicle make counter-battery responses far less likely to succeed. In practical terms, a platoon of such trucks can disperse along coastal arteries or inland staging zones, saturate a battle space with seekers, and vanish into the road net before an adversary has identified where the salvo originated. That combination of dispersion, salvo density, and rapid shoot and scoot behavior turns radar hunting into a repeatable drill rather than a high risk sortie. The technical architecture aligns with its mission. A compact delta wing airframe, pusher propeller, and small piston engine keep costs manageable and endurance high. The seeker listens across the frequencies most commonly used by surveillance and fire control radars, homing when signal strength and geometry align. A GPS INS navigation core handles the transit and loiter phases, while proximity fused fragmentation charges are optimized to shred antenna arrays, feed horns, waveguides, and associated electronics, precisely the components that are hardest to harden without impairing performance. Even the proximity fuse choice speaks to purpose physical destruction is less important than making the radar node inoperable at the worst possible moment. Operationally, the Eastern Theater Command is the most telling home for the system. This formation sits opposite Taiwan, watches the East China Sea, and frequently rehearses blockades, strike packages, and joint fires. Introducing a mature anti-radar loiterer into that playbook enables rehearsal of an opening move aimed at paralyzing Allied sensor networks. Maritime radars aboard Aegis-equipped ships, land-based long-range air surveillance arrays, and airborne early warning platforms depend on a continuous radar environment to generate a shared track picture. Seed that environment with dozens of patient radar hunters, and defenders must either accept intermittent blindness or burn precious interceptors shooting down relatively low-cost drones while larger salvos assemble out of sight. The doctrine implied by the ASN-301 is not isolated. It dovetails with China's broader shift toward layered, unmanned, and attritable systems that complement ballistic and cruise missiles. A logical sequence emerges, unmanned radar hunters force emitters off or destroy critical nodes, electronic attack and decoys exploit the confusion, long-range precision fires then arrive against targets deprived of early warning, follow-on swarms and strike aircraft push through degraded defenses. Crucially, this approach reduces reliance on manned aircraft for the riskiest suppression tasks and preserves high-end munitions for decisive strikes. 
It is a formula designed to be repeated, adapted, and exported, leveraging mass and persistence more than exquisite performance. Allied forces do have countermeasures, but each comes with trade-offs. Emission control, passive sensors, and distributed radar concepts can reduce vulnerability, yet they erode coverage and responsiveness just when commanders crave clarity. Decoy emitters can draw off seekers but consume time and logistics while risking misallocation of interceptor shots. Hard kill options, guns, short-range missiles, and directed energy systems, must be positioned close to the threatened emitters and remain alert for hours, a posture that is manpower-intensive and susceptible to saturation. Networking multiple smaller radars to create a resilient mosaic is promising, but if seekers span a wide frequency range and arrive in waves, the mosaic can still be chipped apart faster than it can be repaired. The psychological effect should not be discounted. Air defense crews are trained to fight through jamming and to manage missile raids, the rhythm of those engagements is well understood. A persistent radar hunting drone changes the cadence. Operators may hesitate to energize sensors for periodic checks, delay target confirmation, or hold fire awaiting higher authorization, all while commanders lose confidence in the completeness of their picture. In combined arms warfare, hesitation is a cost in itself. If a fleet commander doubts the radar horizon, he repositions high-value units farther from the threat axis and seeds initiative. If a battery commander questions that the sky is clean, she withholds engagements and invites leakers. Strategically, the emergence of an operational Chinese anti-radar loiterer complicates deterrence calculations. Defenders now must assume that peacetime exercises are being watched by systems that can translate observed emissions into wartime target sets. The PLA can pre-stage launcher trucks during crises without the political signal associated with massing aircraft, and it can maintain pressure for days using dispersed logistics. For U.S. and Allied planners, that means wargaming not only missile salvos and aircraft packages but also the humbler logistics of drone attrition, replacement canisters, reload cycles, and the airspace management challenges of intercepting numerous small, slow targets amid higher-end threats. There is also an export angle with regional consequences. Countries seeking a budget path to suppression of enemy air defenses have historically had to buy advanced aircraft, sophisticated missiles, and deep training pipelines. A truck-launched loitering munition lowers the cost of entry. If Beijing chooses to offer variants abroad, states with modest air forces could gain a credible SEAD tool for coastal denial or critical infrastructure defense. That potential diffusion reinforces the broader trend seen in recent conflicts from the Caucasus to the Middle East and Ukraine, inexpensive unmanned systems can generate outsized strategic effects when they target the nervous system of modern militaries, sensors, links, and command nodes, rather than the armor and steel of platforms alone. None of this makes the ASN-301 a wonder weapon. It is a single instrument in a larger orchestra, limited by weather, counter-UAS defenses, deception, and the inherent physics of passive homing. But its public debut in frontline Chinese units demonstrates that the PLA is willing to put persistent radar hunting into routine practice, not just theory. In the opening hours of a high-end contingency, that practice could matter more than any technical brochure. The first thing defenders may lose is not a warship or a radar tower, it is confidence in the picture their radars paint. When confidence wavers, choice is narrow, and the side that engineered the doubt has already achieved a real, if intangible, advantage.